Okay. okay, we're ready to start our next session. Depends on the traffic. Um, after this one, be sure to stick around. Earl mm -hmm. Evans is going to talk about why he left the apple too. So, he invites you all to bring tomatoes. He told me that earlier. Uh, but right now, Carrington's going to do a session on Inform 7. Thanks, Carrington. Hello, everyone. So, yes, so my session is going to be uh, very improv. I downloaded the, um, the development language in Form 7 this morning during Ken's presentation. I've learned the basics of it, and what I'm going to do is impart to you what I've learned so far, and together as a group, we are going to make a fully running, completed, tested text adventure that can run on an Apple II. So I've got my timer running, 29 minutes and 30, second, 30 seconds left to go, and so that's the goal. Uh, we're not going to get into anything in depth, mostly because I have two hours or two and a half hours experience with this language. But I've been reading for a year about Inform 7, the latest version of Inform, which is a development language specifically for text adventures. That's all it can do. And I have a bit of previous experience with a language called TADS. It was sort of a competitor to earlier versions of Inform, but I've been reading for the last year or so that this new Inform 7 came out, came, came, came out and uh, is the, uh, uh, a, whole new, a whole new approach, you know, vastly easier than earlier things. So I thought, I wrote Andy, saying, you know what, i got this idea for a presentation. Let's, uh, let's do an improv game development, and intentionally I'm not going to look at this. We'll learn it today, and I'll show you what I've learned so far. So, uh, I had time to make one slide, because I just made it, and this is the entire presentation, and then we're going to get to the development environment, get some ideas, and make a game. So, uh, there's essentially three steps to making a text adventure. We're going to create a world, we're going to make some rules, and we're going to play it. The playing is essentially the testing at the same time. Inform is different than programming languages as you might understand them. And it's specifically geared to people that cannot program or have never, everybody can program, but specifically about people who have never programmed. And that's what I'm going to try to do in this presentation in the next 28 minutes and 5 seconds, is get somebody, ideally somebody in the audience, who has never written a program, ever, but thought, I've got an idea, or I'd like to make something for the Apple II, I'd like to contribute to the community, but I'm not a software developer, I don't know C, I definitely know how to do assembler, short scares the hell out of me. Um, <laughs> so what am I going to do? Well, Inform is a, you write your, your adventure in English. English is the development language. The syntax is English language syntax with capitals and periods and occasional semicolons. And it's indented, which I learned 30 seconds ago, the indents seem to matter. Yeah. <laughs> so it's things we're going to learn as we go. But you don't have to learn new commands. You don't have to learn um, strange syntax. You don't have to know a lot of math. You, if you want scores, you just say, increase the score by one. Bingo, it'll handle it for you. So what we're going to do now that we've looked at our ideas is go through the process, pick a scene, start developing a game, and start looking at it. Then I'm going to show you how you play it through, how you test it a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about something called the scheme, um, which is a neat part of Inform that lets you look at the paths you have previously taken and which ones would still work and which ones wouldn't. Now, in the audience, how many of you have played a text adventure before? So most people. So you all have the basic idea. So uh, okay, so that's good. So th that's basically the experience you need to make a text adventure. Really, really is like telling you can, a story. Yeah, if you can speak English and you have played one, you're good. That's that's the background you need. So for the couple of you that haven't. The idea behind this sort of game is the player, this play in the game, is going to type commands, and the commands they are they're sort of giving them to an invisible an avatar that's inside the game. So the way you play the game is you type things like take the ball, and then it might say it's taken because the, your little avatar in the game is taking the ball or moving north or fighting the dragon or what have you. So what we're going to do now is create a world. We're going to make some rules for that world to define whatever sort of game you guys feel like making, and then we'll play it and test it. So that's it for the slides. Let's look at Inform. So this is Inform. We're going to pick a new project, and the first, hopefully these things will be back. Now the first thing we need to do is name our game. So who wants to pick a name for our game? Somebody, shout out. Andy, pick a name for our game. What's it called? Um, Wall of Doom. Wall, that's, I would play that game. Wall <laughs> of Doom. We've now made Wall of Doom. It says by Carrie Davidson, because that's why I've installed it, but it's really by Andy Mullen. So, when you create it, I, and I've tried to make the text as large as possible, so things will scroll a little weird, but I hate it when I can't read from the back and with my eyesight. I'm trying, this is as big as the text will get, it seems. The, the ID, the development environment that we're going to work in, in Form 7, is divided into two panels. Each panel can display whatever you want. It starts by, by displaying the source. This is where we're going to type the game and your, the, the entire text of your manual that is searchable, 
as you go. So you're going to say, I want to type stuff as I go and type things in. What do I do? Uh, we have buttons at the top here. Oh, sorry. For, for go, replay, stop, and release. So those are the buttons we're going to be using, and we're going to type in English. That's that's your entire development environment. Oops, I do this. I mean, it's crazy. Okay, so uh, what we'll do, um, what genre is our game going to be? What kind of game is it? What do we want to play? I mean, we've, we've probably seen them. You could, it could be a space game. It could be a fantasy game. It could be a mystery. It could be whatever you want. What do we feel like? What, what, what kind of game do you want to make? Shout it out. Come on, pick a genre. <laughs> Any genre. Adventure. adventure. We're going to make an adventure game. So future adventure or past adventure? Past. Past uh, adventure. So it's going to be knights and dragons, that kind of stuff. Awesome. So past adventure. So we have to get that mindset. We're going to have a game set in a past adventure. Now, in text adventures, as you know, you've probably played before, you sort of move from area to area. In Inform, it calls those areas rooms. So each place that you can be in, or that can exist, or can hold things, is called a room. Even if it's a cave, or a spaceship, or a cockpit, or whatever, it's called a room. So what kind of room are we going to start in? A grotto. A grotto. So we're going to be in the grotto. So we're going to start our first command, very, very complicated command, the grotto. Oops, here we go, down at the end. Oops. The grotto is a room. We now have a fully functional game. We can run this, that's it. And we have developed, it, it'll put everything together, and it'll make a room, and the player will be sitting in that room, because that's the only room that exists. But that's probably not enough to have a game. It would just be a grotto. So we should probably put something in the grotto. Let's, let's put something in there. What should be in the grotto? Somebody shout out something that can exist in the grotto. Table. Pardon? Table. There's a table. Excellent. Because the table's a certain set of things. We can give some characteristics. So a table is in, <laughs> is in the grotto. Same. Excellent. Let's run our game so far. Go. Wall of Doom. It's compiled. It's running. We have no errors. Grotto, you can see a table here. Serial number, release. We're done. It's working perfectly. We have a player. I can type commands. Like, look. Look. You can see a table here. Now, I can imagine, having played this game before, since we've given no rules, the, only, the game is going to help you like crazy. Inform makes tons of assumptions. And it knows the difference between something it knows because you told it explicitly and something you knows because it knows something it knows because it's assumed it, and it does it makes a little scheme and it color codes them so it knows which is which, and it'll it'll throw out assumptions when you give it more things that are different. Now I'm going to show you one of the few actual commands that's useful that that's different from English, although it's a concatenation of two English words. It's show me. So when you want to know about something, the show me command exists when you're developing, but it doesn't exist when you give it to other people. But I can say Show me a thing. For instance, if I just type show me, it'll say, here's what, here, show me. Well, you're in a grotto. It's a room. Yourself exists, and you are a person. Because you could be a horse, so you could be a thing. You don't have to be a the game. Should, and there's a table here. But that's all it knows. So tell me about this table. So show me table. Ah, table. It's made the following assumptions. We didn't tell anything. It said, fine, you told me nothing. Location, currently, it's in the grotto. It's singular name. So it's not something like, it'll say, you know, take, it's the table. It's not like water. We're going to take, we don't take some table. It says, ah, but you can tell it what kind of indefinite pronoun uh, what you use. It, it's improper named. It's unlit, because things can be lit or unlit. It's made the assumption that it's inedible, that it's portable. That's probably going to be a problem. Did we want our table to move or not? That's something we'll want to think about. And the printed name is table. But we could say, understand anything as the table. When somebody says stinking table or the thing, know that that means the table. We can define how we want. It knows the printed pearl name. It doesn't have one. We, it, does, it just has used tables. It doesn't. We don't need something fancy. Um, it definitely ours will act as stuff. But that's told us, probably, we didn't want the table to be something you're going to pick up and carry around in your inventory. We meant it as some sort of supporting platform. So let's go back to our source and add some more very, very complicated commands at this table. Let's, so assume we're going to say the table is a supporter. Let's rerun our game. Look, it still works. So we say, show me table. Now the difference is, print for names, it's supporters and definite, uh, fixed name, where is it? You know, fixed in place. It can no longer be picked up, but we can't put things on it. So if we had something else in this room. It could be something we could pick up and carry with us. It could also be something that we could leave on the table. Uh -huh. So let's do that. And then let's add some more rooms, because we want to expand it. So what, what else do we have in, in our grotto? Fair maiden. Oh. Treasure. <laughs> okay, so fair maiden. So I, I think we should pick something we can, because we can do that. You can create other people, which we can look at later, and that you can talk with that kind of stuff. But let's, pick, let's do an object. Oh, why not? On the table. Pardon? A hole on the table. 
Okay, let's put a bowl. Perfect, because a bowl is a special type of thing as well. It can contain things. So let's say a bowl, instead of you just make it, instead of the bowl is here, we're going to say a bowl, and you don't have to capitalize things, by the way, is on the table. But it helps it when you capitalize, when it's trying to pick between, did you mean that this was an adjective or a noun or whatever? So if you capitalize, if you make it easier to read, it'll understand. It won't have to make such. So you can see, oh, we just, I've just run it again. So in the grotto, you can see a table on which is a bowl here. So because we can see, we have it hidden it in. So now when we're playing, I can say things like, let's say take table. That's fixed in place because we defined it as a supporter, as a thing. Well, then I'm going to take the bowl instead. Take the bowl, take it. Now if you look at our inventory, you're carrying a bowl. We have a fully functional, perfectly running game that understands that there's a table that's fixed in place in a place called a grotto, that you are a person, that you have an inventory system, you can carry things around. There's a bowl that you can pick up that I could drop, that I could pick up again, that I could stick on the, on the table. Something about a bowl that's different than most things is a bowl can have things in it. Unlike the table, which we say is a supporter, we can say, no, I want you to understand that the bowl, because it doesn't really know a bowl, it just knows it's a thing with the word letters B-O-L-W. But we can teach it that a bowl is something I want to be able to put things in. So a bowl is on the table. And we can say, the bowl is a container. Now, if we had other things, oh, sorry, the bowl is a, I spelled container wrong. Good example, look, I said run, Gave me an error. And said, yeah, hold on. The problem, the sentence, the bowl, let me scroll down so you can read it, big, big text, appears to say two things that are the same. It's reading, I'm a bowl and container, because I've said the bowl is a container, not that it's a container. So it's saying, well, hold on, you've told me about this thing that exists called a container. Like, why are you, are you, what do you mean by that? So I said, no, no, I meant container. So, oh, I understand. The mindset you want to get into, I, I've realized over my vast experience with working with it before, uh, is when um, uh, uh, the disappointingly non-zombie Romero was talking earlier. Well, I didn't, but that guy, remember that guy who smoked the pipe and just talked about his, he just did his presentation off the top of his head? You're that guy. And this is your secretary. You just said we there's a grotto, there's a bowl, and it's a container. You just, you just speak it out, and your amazingly, amazingly intelligent secretary is just going to make all the code for you. You don't have to be a programmer at all to get a fully functional work. So now we have a room. We've got a grotto. We've got a, a table that can't move around. It understands. It's got all the code that's making a platform to make it fixed in place, all those things, that can support things. It has a bowl. It understands the bowl can be taken, it can be dropped, it can be moved. It understands the bowl can contain other things. Not much of a game. Of course, because we have no way to win, we have no way to lose, we have no score, we have no other place else to go. So I think we should have some, let's have another place. And then we can put a puzzle in of some sort, and a way to win, and we can see how quickly we can make a running game. Then we start to debug it. So which direction should we be able to leave from the grotto, say, and what should be there when we get there? Who's that? Down. Pardon? Down. Down. Okay, so we're going to move down from the grotto. Rather, Excellent. And when we go down from the grotto, what do we find? Dungeon. A dungeon. Mermaid. Excellent. Oh, mermaid, mermaid. Okay, so we, so let's see. So we say, down from the grotto. I've never done down before. Grotto is a dungeon. Oh, is, sorry, the dungeon. So, run. We run again. We see a table because we're in the grotto. Let's take the bowl, walk down the dungeon, see if it works. Take bowl. Take it. Look at our inventory. Inventory. You're carrying a bowl. Let's try moving south first. South, can't go that way. Down, you're in the dungeon. We now have a fully functional game with a player that can pick up things, carry an inventory, understands bowls, and can put things in them. You can now move back and forth along a direction that understands. We said that down was to the dungeon, so I now say move up. It goes, I get it, up must be back to the grotto. You don't even have to worry about that stuff. It understands reciprocal things. If you say that this is unlit, it understands, therefore, it could be lit, it could not be lit. If you, if you say that if I move east, it's made the assumption that moving west was the opposite way. Now, you can tell otherwise. I could have said, up from the dungeon is the trap door that kills you. It's aha! It's like, uh -huh. So it'll say, fine, I get it. It's, a, it. it's not, it'll say, I get it. If I move down, I'm in the dungeon. If I move up, I'm in the, I'm in the trap door room or whatever. But in this case, because we didn't say anything weird, it says, well, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to assume if you go down, it's one place. So if you go the opposite way, you must be back to where you start. Great. All of that without having any coding experience, without needing any programming, and you can just run it, and with one command, I could save this to a, a Z file that would work on an Apple II. This would be a fully functional no way, really? Apple II game. Yep. Whoa. So, but it wouldn't be a great game, although it has a great name. It's a name that's going to sell. 
But <laughs> what we don't have is a way to win. We have like no goal here and no way to lose and nothing like that. So we should, let's implement some points. Like, like for instance, right now we've got a score of zero out of a possible nothing because we can't get scored. And we this is what this means. Zero, that many points, this many moves. And that's pretty much, it doesn't have to be this. You can define what you want to appear up there, but by default and by convention with text adventures, generally you have the name of the game, your current score, and the number of moves. So let's add scoring to this game. And let's say that when we take the bowl, well, I'm going to introduce a, a logical error on purpose. I'm just bringing it up so you don't think I made a mistake. So I'm going to introduce a logical error. We're going to say when you take the bowl, you get a point. It's going to be awesome. We're going to feel a sense of achievement. So uh, before taking the bowl, increase score, I'll say the score, the score by one. I think that's the format. Excellent. So before taking the bowl, so because I'm giving I'm giving my instructions to the the game versus when the player gives their instructions when they play in the game. So the player does things like type go north. So it give, the player is giving the instructions to the avatar in the game. But when I'm typing my code, it's a bit of a mind difference. You have to think I'm giving my instructions, you know, the grotto is a room, and you know, before doing this, I'm telling the game how to be. So on my instructions to the game, I'm telling the game, before this happens, do this. So now I could say after taking the bowl, or with, with the, every turn, check if the player has a bowl, give him a point. So in this case, well, we've introduced a small area that's going to let me have an infinite number of points. Um, I can now take a bowl. So here we see a, uh, see a table on which is a bowl empty, because we told, told it can contain things here. And you can tell it to be less or more verbose. I've got it in verbose mode, so it's always saying on which is a bowl, and so it's, it's helping us out. So I'm going to say take bowl. Sense of achievement, your score has just gone up by one point. Our score is one and two moves. Now I'm going to drop the bowl, which will not break because we didn't tell it was breakable. And I'm going to take the bowl. My score is up by one point. Now that's clear here. Oh, so I can just sit here going. So I don't mean when you take the bowl, every time you take the bowl, you get a point. Clearly what I meant was the first time you take the bowl, you get a point. So let's let's change our incredibly complicated code. Before taking the bowl, for the first time, he says, as if he's talking to a child. Now, let's take the bowl. Score's got up by a point. Mild sense of accomplishment. Drop bowl. Try our cheat code of take bowl, drat. Now we have a game that understands scoring, keeps track of the score, understands a reason why you get you get a point for finding that object. And that's very typical. Most of the time, if you're going to make a text adventure, you're going to have something like find all the treasures, and every time you get a treasure or unlock a door, or, but you want it usually to be the first time you do something. It doesn't always have to be. It can be every turn that you have oxygen still in this room, you're going to get points. You've got to stay alive for a certain amount of time, or maybe it's going to count down. You can lose points, whatever. And you don't have to use words like increase the score by one. I just, just in case you're wondering, like I'm, it's not like I've memorized the fancy, very specific terms you need to use. I can say increment score. Take, oops, take all. Still worked? And I said, yeah, score goes up by one. Increment score, increment score by two. Increase the score by two. It understands that. It's, it's something that's going to really help you out and does understand general English. You don't have to be a specific term. So now we have the ability to get a score. So, but we don't know what it's out. So, and so when we when, when we're to win, we would just have one point. We might want to set a, like a maximum score. We could say like a, we could set that for instance. We could say the where am I? The maximum score is four. And now I have a game that has a maximum score of four. So if I was to win, it would say I now have four points or one point out of four. That not showing me anything because I haven't hit that maximum. So let's come up with. Uh, uh, a puzzle or something, some, some, something that we have to get past. Uh, what's an idea? Throw, throw out anything. We'll see if I have the ability to do it. Make it simple. Give it or make it simple. Could you have a, a dungeon, like a door to a cell in the dungeon? I love it. To unlock. Perfect. That's awesome. So what we want to do is do. exactly. That is the, wall of the dungeon could have the wall. Wall of two. Okay. So we're gonna make we're gonna make <laughs> make ourselves a door. So where's where's the door's gonna be in the dungeon? Excellent, excellent. Where in the dungeon? Like where, what part of the dungeon? North, south, east, like where? South wall. South wall, okay. So here we're gonna say, south of the dungeon is a uh, dark door. Uh, the dark door. The dark door is a door. Uh, the dark door, not capitalist, is locked. The dark door is unlockable. Not sure if I need all that. 
I'm sure we'll compile. Oh, got a problem. The dark door seems to be telling me that two same thing. Oh, sorry, the data's clear, because I call it the dark door. The dark. Could you combine some of those sentences? Which? Well, I said the dark door is a door and is locked. Yeah. And is. Uh, so, dark door is locked and unlockable. Easier to say. And I think that gives me the syntax. What am I missing? Door is locked and unlockable. Same. Oh, you know why? Because I'm not capitalizing. Because it understands certain words. Dark door. I think in this case I have to capitalize. Sorry, guys. Maybe is locked and is unlockable? Mm -hmm. Oh, I spelled something wrong? Often that's my problem. Dark door unlockable. Kind of or oh. so the dungeon property increases because. So of the dungeon is, oh, you know what, Jeez. sorry, here's a great example of a problem. You have to type in, you can't say, that sentence is too complicated. So we want to say, the dark door is south, oh, sorry, south of the dungeon. If I say that, it's going to say it's okay. No, yes, it is. No. Dark door is south of the dungeon. I've got my examples here. Hold on. Hold on. Two hours in. So you have made three doors already. Dell box, taking the brawl, taking the ball, score. I mean doors. I heard doors like an hour ago. This road. Sorry, dudes. I don't see it, but I know there's. I think you have to tell it what the road is south of the I want to see if it's if it's because I'm using the word door. Yeah, okay, so because I'm using the word door in the capital. So I'm going to call it Boogie Man, but I'm not going to say it Boogie Man. Maybe you have to make the room that the dark door leads to first. Yeah, I think you might have to do that. Um, <coughs> no, see, it's the fact that I'm calling it a dark door. Dark wall is a door. I don't know, man, because that's how you do it, I swear. I don't mind missing a period. I don't think you're it says it's a door, but there's no way in or out. Oh, yeah, so. It's a room there. Oh, wait, okay. The dark, the the dark, dark door, door is a door. The dark door is south of the dungeon. Dark wall. Dark wall. So you don't have to be appropriate, but clearly it helps. Excellent. Now, uh, the problem is being a door, we can, so I can go south from the grotto. Oh no, okay, I go down from the grotto, and uh, if I look south, you see nothing, so I, can I go south? No, you can't since the dark wall leads to nowhere. So it understands that we don't have anything past the dark wall. So let's quickly make a room past the dark wall, and then we'll make it so that you need to a key that's hidden, maybe in the hole, because we got nowhere else to hide a key, that unlocks the door. And that'll be our, our massive puzzle. So, the dark, the dark wall is locked. Ha! Huh. The... Gold key. No, what color key? What, what, what do we want to be key? Yeah. What kind uh, of what color key should we have? Uh, ruby. Ruby key. Oh, I love it. Key. it the ruby under key the bowl. is where? Under the yes. bowl. Under the. We're so fancy. You've got a reason. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep. Yeah, because you got to that. The ruby key is under the bowl. The ruby key unlocks the dark wall. So we have to tell it what the heck it does. That should all be fine. Nope. Ruby key appears the same thing. What, what am I missing? Ruby key is under the bowl. Appears to be the same thing. So the I'm ruby key the and. Oh, uh, under is not. You, you, you don't say under the bowl. You have to say, let me just check in the bowl. Mm -hmm. I think we have to use that the bowl is on the ruby key. Okay. Yeah. I'll put it in the bowl for a second and look up. I think it's, I think the preposition, it can't be. You don't have to make yeah. that secret. So, you have to say, it's telling you it's already there. So right now, we've got our, oh, right, yes. So, the, so dark bowl, or the, the bowl is hiding the key? Well, it's more that we want to talk about the bowl. Where's our bowl? Before... Freaking the bowl. Ah, bowl is on the table. The bowl is a container. We're gonna, but the problem is you can see into it. We're gonna say the bowl is a, an opaque container. I think that'll do it. <coughs> In which, nope, Ruby Key is a closed container. Then I think we have to open it like a bag, but we'll get there. Okay, bowl closed. Getting close. If I say, yeah, so I, now if I say take key, won't find it, but if I say open bowl, clearly down what we want. Uh, oh, it is. Oh, I haven't said it's openable. It's called the container. <laughs> the bowl is open a bowl. So I can run it again. <laughs> Closed, open bowl. Makes a lot of sense. Take key. 
We've got our key. South. Oh, no, down. So we're in the dark wall. I'm going to try to open open the wall. Again, makes all sense. See if we locked. Unlock wall with key. You unlock the dark wall. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Yes. We didn't get a point for that, though. Well, because we didn't tell it that was worth any points. How many points should we get for opening it? Three. Um, three points. Excellent. I like it. Win. So, well, and, and let's say well, that's going to be our amazing, incredible open the bowl. So, say, guess whatever, because we've got four minutes. Let's we got to we got to deploy. They're saying like one month a game. No, no, twenty minutes is a game, dude. So let's go. Okay, we need, we're going to say when you take when you take this key, you're going to get say one point for taking the key, two points for unlocking the door, and we're going to win in victory if you if you do that. Great. So before taking the key, what's the rest of this I need to write? Uh, for, for, the first for the first time, so we don't get or I look like you cheaters. For the first time, you don't have to use this colon thing, but I find it mentally because I'm probably you don't have to. You know, I just like to say before this, do the following. Take the key. I'm gonna say say. Woohoo! Shiny. You learn the spell. Say shiny. Increase score by one. Let's do a quick test to make sure I got that correct. Uh, open bowl, works, take key, says woohoo, shine, taken, points got up, but we got our one point. So now we're going to quickly, uh, we get what, two points for opening the door, right? So uh, we'll put it here. You can kind of go anywhere. Uh, before unlocking the dark wall, I haven't actually done this before, but I'm sure it'll work. Uh, increase score by two. That I think it should be after unlocking. <clears throat> I'm not sure if after works in that position. Doesn't. Let's try it. Oh. It's got to be before. Or when? When? Could be. You can also use if. Oh, before unlocking. Have I spelled it wrong? Before unlocking the dark wall. I don't have time. we got to deploy. South of. Oops. South of the dark wall <coughs> is the. Winning place. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, every turn we say just check this all the time. If the player is in the winning place, <coughs> players, what are we gonna do? Players in the winning place. Win. Uh, win. Yes. So we're gonna say say hurrah. No, I'm just gonna win. We're not even giving anything. Um, end the game in victory. I think that should work. You can also say end the game in death. Okay, so we have to, what are our steps? We're going to open the bowl. Right. Then we yeah. take the key. You have to take the bowl too. I'm going to take the bowl. Oh yeah, because I get a point for taking the bowl. You are an Infocom master. Then we go, where, where do we move from here? Down. 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 We move down. Dark wall. What do we do? Unlock wall. Unlock wall. Let's say with what? Key. Key. No, I, I think I can not even just say key. with key. Oh, no, sorry. Unlock. Oops. Unlock spelling. Unlock. Two minutes. Wall with key. Unlock the dark wall. Uh, where south, do south. south. Thank you. South. Woo! -hoo, you have one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to get points for the winning place. So we only went with two out of a possible four. You couldn't possibly get four because we forgot to get points and go there. But you get the basic idea. You can throw things out. You can have vehicles, and those are just you say it's a vehicle. You can have an animal. Then you say it's a it, it's a he, it's a she. You can do tons of stuff. Now let's quickly look at how we would debug in the next one minute and forty two seconds. So we're going to debug and deploy and make an Apple II game. This amazing Apple II game. You know you want to you want to get a copy of this. So on. As I said, there's two different panels, and you've got different things you can show, errors, that kind of stuff. So we're going to switch this panel to look at something called the scheme. Maybe you put out the scheme. And I'm going to make it bigger, these panels, just to show you. This shows all the paths we have ever taken through the game, and it remembers all of them. The current path is this one. The last time we did it, we went from start. We said open bowl, take key, take bowl, down, unlock wall, etc. It remembers all the versions you did though. Like everywhere you've gone, all through the game. It keeps track of all of it. So anytime you want, you can say, go back to here. I want to replay from that point. I can go to this down here and say, if I hold over this. It now on the right hand side, on the left hand side here, has just played through the game itself automatically, testing to that point and did it still work, did it not start. I can bless paths and say, you know what? This works. Ignore the scheme to that point. I'm not going to make any changes above it because you're slowing me down memory wise. You, you purse things. But it's saying how when I played that one path again and I got down to here, it said self, you can't get that way. It found basically a bug. 
that our earlier path might have been okay, but because of changes we made, that path's no longer there. Because that's the hard part of a, of a game like this. It's fine for us in our three little locations, but when you have 200 locations and maps and teleports, all these things, how are you going to remember what goes to where? The game plays through and tests for you. You can remember paths. You can say, play that path again. You can do things like te test, and then give it a bunch of commands. Test the following. Take the bowl, drop the bowl, smash the bowl, kill the bowl with the bowl, or without the bowl, or test the following in all rooms. Oh, the duck is in, we have to deploy. So <laughs> you can say, test this in the grotto, test it everywhere but the grotto, test it after 2 p.m., test it before 300 turns, all those sorts of things. Um, and the one the last thing I want to show you is on the, sorry, our index, of, which is contents aware, and it shows the index of all the various things in your game, so you can get a, like a quick overview of all the objects, all the playthroughs, all that kind of thing. So let's do the remarkably difficult, difficult part of deploying for the Apple ticket. So we're going to go to here to, where is it, release. Release for testing would mean keep in commands like show me and stuff, and cheat commands, that kind of stuff. We're not, screw that. Release. It's now been released. I'm going to just try to hide all this. Hide all that. Hide all you. Get me to my, get me to my desktop. And here we have our what did we call it? Dark? Wall of Death. Where is it? Wall of Death. 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 Save as. It's not letting me do my release. Sorry, guys. Hold on. I did this 20 seconds ago. Set. Maybe it's under my settings. Oh, there we go. Pick your Zico version. The one the version I have installed ha has limited the number, but we want to release as Zico version 5. That'll play on the Apple II. So when we say we want to release as Zico version 5 and then bind up. So then when you release, you get your Zico file. The Apple II has. Um, three different already compiled uh, uh, inform engines. Um, on the Mac, for instance, I like the, the program Zoom, which will run, take a Z file and run it as a game. It takes, the Z file is like a little binary blob that is your game, but it needs the engine to run it to turn it into an Infocom game. There are two that exist for the Apple II, and there's one that exists already pre-compiled for the 2GS. So if you just release this and you save it as that Z5 file, it is now a fully playable Apple II game. Now in this case, it's not a great game, what's with the open goal, but you know, we're rushing. But this lets somebody, this is, I want to give you the fastest, quickest overview, but it shows you with no programming experience at all, and you just have the ability to type and understand English, you can now write and deploy a fully functional Apple II game. You just stick your ZX file and the little compiled Infocom engine on a floppy disk, you have a runnable Infocom game exactly, this, or a runnable text adventure exactly the same as the old Infocom games. So if you have thought about making a game for the Apple II and thought, oh my god, I can't do the graphics, or I'm not a programmer, or I'm not whatever, this is a window in releasing a game. If you can tell a story and you can write in English, you can make an Apple II game. So there's no reason why we don't have 30 more games at Kansas Specs next year. You all now know how to do this. Want to see some stories? <laughs> well, then. Um, unless you have very, 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 very simple questions, I think that'll wrap us up. Oh, David. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? Actually, it's not a question, but a comment. Sure. My nine-year-old son has uh, shown a lot of interest in um, writing stories, Great. and so I'm excited to actually show him this. And you know, because he, obviously he can mix writing with story. I mean, storytelling with games. Sure. And obviously, and you can do tons more than I've showed you. I barely. I mean, I've now known the language for three hours, right? But you can see within three hours, bingo! Now we all know how to do this. Yes. And it has a crazily good built-in manual where you just say, how the hell the heck do I do a door? Just search the word for the door, door. It'll say, doors, can have the following properties. When you define it, it'll give examples. An example of a secret door will be a door, un not visible, lockable, locked, and just say this and call it. So it'll tell you what you want. You've got a built-in, perfect little, way, way, way more accurate than I am. Um, I found it remarkable that you can get to this point this quickly and have a game, particularly one in, for us, that can run on the Apple II. Like you can make your own Infocom style games. It's just for the right. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. I love it.
Uh, are there any uh, file size considerations? Like, will it only create a game that will fit on an 800K disk? No, it won't that? limit that. But unless you put in sounds or graphics, which it will support, you can have cover images and all that. You, you say, the cover image is this, and it just deploys in there. But if you don't add those, it's just the text. And the actual blog is assuming that you have an engine that runs all this. So you've got the compiled engine, which is really small. In the Apple II, it's 8K or something like that. Little tiny thing. So the rest of the disk is for your text. And it barely is larger than the text that you type, because it really is just the list of commands, okay. assumed to be understood by an informed engine, and those already exist. So really, you want, there's no way you're going to hit a file size limit on even the 140K disk, unless you incorporate sounds and graphics and stuff like that. But it's fine. It's text. Awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's totally awesome. Love it. So that's it. So thank you very much.